Hello and welcome to Racers. Now we are approaching what they call Super Saturday, a very, very busy weekend in the flat racing calendar. Probably the busiest of all, actually. We've got Newmarket, York and Ascot all racing on Saturday afternoon. They're all also racing on Friday afternoon. We've got racers, anti-post racers, priced up galore. So we've got SD in here for this Monday night slot. Um, SD, how was your weekend? How were you feeling on this Monday evening? Well, a bit jet lagged. I went up to air yesterday. It's a fantastic race there. They do, they do put on a, a lovely spread at air, don't they? Um, and good to see races now. Followers, of course, at air coming up to me and congratulating us on how great this channel is. Just one thing about the comments last week: this vape is not a joint. We are a drug-free zone on races now. Very good. And as you can see there, for the totals, SD still an absolute country in front of me and yeah it is probably very likely going to cost me 50 quid come october but there's plenty of time to turn it around sd don't worry about it um starting with the feature race of the week that is the july cup group one six furlongs at newmarket on saturday afternoon at 4 35 pretty late busy day pretty late etc um van Dijk is apparently uh, back on track after an unsatisfactory blood test saw in miss royal asco but we've got um in his Sherin, who won at Haydock in the Sandy Lane, backed up at the Commonwealth. Van Dijk didn't get anywhere near beating him at Haydock. Um, but I have got a big question mark over the value of the Commonwealth Cup form. I could be proven wrong at this uh, this time on Saturday. But at the moment, big question marks. In his Sherin, did win easily. Don't get me wrong. But what, what did he beat, really? Van Dijk didn't run. Elite Staters, who was the second favourite, was a non-runner on the day. But Canero Forte didn't run. Give Me The Beat Boys was well-backed on the day for the Commonwealth up and ran an absolute stinker four to one second five last of 14 um like i say he won well with authority commonwealth cup or slash three-year-olds have got a good record in the july cup recently but he's got to prove it for me and two to one is short enough in my opinion yes um he's, look he's done very little wrong this year he, he's, he's short enough as you say but you couldn't be back in vindic at uh but four to one could you i, I don't know i mean i suspect I think I think the comments are as follows: that a three-year-old will probably win the race. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I mean, the other ones just they're just not very sexy, are they? Bloody Kinross Regional, you know, uh, to an extent. Millstream, Cardam, they're just as as Group One horses go. They're much of a muchness, and then you know, that there's, there's a pretty good chance that in sharing is a very good horse. Aiden's record in this with with three-year-olds is is pretty good. Um, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see River Tiber run better, but that is to an extent built into his price. You can't have a bet in the race at the moment. And what is Ed Walker doing not running English uh, waking, waiting for the bloody Lennox? I mean, you get one chance of this game, don't you? Yeah, I 100% agree. English Oak probably should have ran in this one. Um, River Tiber, I'll be... I'd be stretched to be back in River Tiber for this anti-post at six to one. Got no way near beating Hartem last time at Royal um, as a thirteen to eight favourite. Um, even though I would have been with him, Kim Ross will he run? I mean, the ground is is good to soft there at the moment at Newmarket, but as we know, it can dry pretty quickly uh, at both tracks at Newmarket. I'm on regional anti-post at sixteen to one. Um, I don't need to go in again. That's already up on the channel. Uh, and to be honest, if he was nine or ten to one now, which he is. Uh, I won't put anyone off backing him again if they were joining. Well, I would, because Six he's Six also Six. entered at York on Saturday. I don't no, think, I think that's run, Friday. More of that, more of that yeah. later. Um, yeah, he's I'll entered in a listed today, race Friday. If it, if it, it's, it's forecast to piss it down tomorrow. Um, I think there's bits and bobs of rain through the week. Nothing material. So you're probably going to run on, I don't know, if I was guessing good, good to soft in places. If it absolutely pulled it down towards the end of the week, I suspect that's why Regional has the entry at York. Um, I wouldn't think he was good enough in this. I do. Um, I thought he did nothing wrong at, at, at Ascot. I probably ran in the yeah, wrong race. He's using, he's using superlatives like he did nothing wrong. I mean, it's not very exciting, is it? I mean, what did he, what did he actually do? He beat, he beat Believing by half a length. You know, he beat... Yeah, but Levin was well supported for that race. He finished in front of Big Evs, who was the favourite. Um, we, we we know that the, the sprinters are much of a muchness anyway. Um, I thought he was... I thought he kind of developed away from the winner, um, the Australian horse. It's all, it's all price-related. I wouldn't be making these comments if he was two or three to one, Bill. 
But I think that I think regionals. I do. I do think regionals are better. I'm obviously, I'm clearly happy with my sixteen. That was over five furlongs. I think the easy six furlongs at Newmarket is perfect for him. I don't think New, the last furlong at Newmarket is not easy. The final furlong, but I think the race as a whole, they do go downhill for a, for a good yeah, chunk yeah. of that race. Um, put it this way. It's a lot less stiff than Ascot six furlongs, for example. Well, it, well, well, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, I think regional. If it it could have ran twice at Royal Ascot Week, and I think it would have been it would have been close to um, favourite in the uh, in the Jubilee because I thought the Jubilee was a crap race. They finished in a bunch. I'm quite happy with him. These three year olds have got to prove it, and I think there's lots of question marks over the Commonwealth Cup form. Innis Sherin might be very, very good and might win. But I think he's got to prove it. And two, two to one is way too short enough for, for him. Um, he's the rightful favourite, but it's it's not for me at that price. One I would say out of the Commonwealth Cup, and I know I've took a dump on the Commonwealth Cup form, Jassau finished third in that Commonwealth Cup, missed the break. He has done that a couple of times in his career, not every time. Um, but I think he's a decent horse. Could outrun his odds at 10 to 1. But like yeah, I say, so I see your off, Wi-Fi continues to be crap. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, we will move on. The... Um, Group 1 action on Friday at Newmarket is the foul of stakes. This is for the Phillies and the Miz. So the classic generation meet their older counterparts for the first time in this one. Um, yeah, I've been taking on Porta Fortuna all season in regards to her not staying a mile properly. She's definitely proven me wrong. She's since won the Coronation Cup at As Royal Ascot and then nearly won the 1,000 guineas before that. So I'm reluctant to be against her again. She is as short as 6-4 to four now, this Porta Fortuna. I think that's probably right, given what I'm about to say about the others. But again, short enough. Um, I thought Running Lion. Running Lion's your second favourite. She's around six to one. Um, I think she nicked a race at, at, at Ascot. Um, what turned out to be crazy or rubbish race or possibly even both. That was a group two. First time the Duke came in round a bend. She, I think she nicked it from the front. Four of the nine horses in this Falm of Stakes at the moment uh, four of them were coming from that Duke of Cambridge, which running Lion won. She ran well earlier in the season at Newmarket, bombed out at Epsom. Bit of an in and out uh, profile for me, running Lion. And I mean, this Port of Fortuna is rated 117. Running Lion's next best rated 110. Yet because of the three year old allowance, Port of Fortuna carries nine pounds less uh, with the weight for age. I mean, just a, just on official ratings, should, she probably should be shorter than six to four. But there is a caveat. Um, I've looked at the exchange just before I came on, SD, and this Port of Fortuna is seven to lay. So, some, I mean, it's not Five to 200. Two hills, I think. Um, I've got to say, this race makes about as much appeal as going on a bloody sewing course. I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah. Um, yeah. All I'm saying is Port of Fortuna, not a guaranteed runner, according to the exchange, does have other options, does have American owners. Um, although I do think this is probably the right race for her. Running Lion, I think she nicked it at Royal Ascot, and then everything else. I mean, you've got horses, everything below the top two in the market, 108 rated, 105, 104, 102, 102. Not best, not best. That is Friday. Also at Newmarket on Friday, and this is the first bet of the uh, video, SD does have one in the July stakes, which takes place on Friday. I'm you glad he stopped talking because that, that, uh, that signal is dreadful. Maybe we're out loud talking, you can, uh, you can put some... Some money in the meter. Yes, the July stakes. What a uh, what a race this is as we wait for the bloody... Uh, is it Friday, sir? Yes, sir. I think. Uh, or is it Thursday? I, 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 I don't know. It's this bloody iPad. It's, it's, it's slow. Oh, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. That's it's why. It's Thursday at 2.25. So we're, 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 going, we're going back in time, viewers, aren't we? Yeah. Looks a nice race this July Stakes, doesn't it? Rasha Bell's in there. Ain't nobody. Both one at Ascot. I can't help but think, though, this this whistle jacket, it, it ran as if it needed further at Ascot, didn't it? It was back to win. The lads knew something. You get the chance to go in at 5-2. to two. Actually, one in its group can only appreciate... Uh, six furlongs here and uh, I think if he turns up he certainly won't be five to two on the day don't forget whistle jackets getting three pounds here from those winners at Ascot um the, the Windsor Castle winner ain't nobody and of course the Coventry winner Rashabar and that that had an element of fluke about it didn't it so 
I think whistle jacket get in the way, surely to bloody God. Win. Yep, that's for SD on Thursday. I think you have got a bet on Friday. Are we going over to York? We're going to be all over the place. Busy weekend that it is. I think we're off to York on Friday for the summer stakes, which is for Phillies, I believe. Awful, awful. Uh, don't like going to York. But anyway, um, yeah, summer stakes. Uh, the market, of course, is is dominated by uh, by an equal love who uh, who won the Wokingham. Mm. But you know, demonstrated was was eminently beatable when when fifth at the at the Curra before that, and you know, I don't know. I just thought it was short enough, and I thought back in Rakia each way, the Cathedral Stakes winner at Salisbury was was the way to go. I mean. Looked at she looked a bloody good horse at uh, at Salisbury and at various points last year as well. Your best mate Owen Burrows uh, trains, doesn't he? And uh, and I thought she was a she was a fair bet. I mean, if it rained, you'd just be slight. I, I've looked at the forecast and I think we'll be all right to be honest. Um, but as I say, she won. She won the cathedral. She she had horses like Equilateral eight lengths back, and funny story. Who, who does reoppose here and didn't get a run? Probably lacks the improvement of uh, of, of of this filly at the stages of their their respective careers. I, I think she's she's a good chance here. And I, I I just thought when I looked at the race that the differential in price. Um, was probably a bit much. So I do like Rakia. Yep, fair enough. A few um, horses got uh, into even form with each other, like the A Day in Devon, etc. Um, but yeah, looks pretty open to me, that one, SD. Right, I think All we're going... Them are elsewhere as well. Yep, few of them are. Is Rakia just got the one entry then, yep? Yep. Yep, she fair enough. Booked. Always a good start on weekends like this. Um, back to Saturday then um, we've got races like the Bunbury Cup currently there's 44 entries in that going to be whistled down um, the, the John Smith's Cup as well got loads of entries in that handicap at York um, but once to look at a new market on Saturday uh, we've already looked at the July Cup this superlative stakes um, won by none other than City of Troy last year usually throws up a good one one of my favourite two-year-old racers, to be fair gets that nice period in between Royal Ascot and, and you know the back end of the season group one for two two-year-olds um sd and i agreed on pendle bay um pentel bay sorry for the um what was the what, the chesham at ascot that was won by bedtime story um i mean other than getting walloped nine lengths <laughs> which he did in second on his second on on pentel bay second start um i think he did very little wrong actually sd we backed him each way i think he wouldn't ran a nice race finished nicely enough in front of 13 other rivals Possibly didn't get the clearest of runs and maybe got going a bit later than what Billy Lochnane, uh, uh, Tom Marquand on the day, sorry, would have liked to. Billy Lochnane apparently is booked for for this week and he's 10 to 1 again. So this is my first bet of the weekend. Um, yeah, Pentel Bay for the superlative at 10 to 1. I think I think that's fair enough. I think he ran a lovely race on just his second start at Ascot behind what could potentially be a superstar. SD might agree, I think. No, not oh. at all. Why not? I agree he was mm. given a crap ride at Ascot. Mm. But my feeling is that bedtime story's ability has been accentuated by the complete and utter crap opposition that day. Uh, the fourth ran at Haydock on uh, Friday evening and finished fourth of five. Was weak as you like in the betting. The third, Brian. Yep. Was had previously um, been been beaten at Chelmsford and Windsor. I don't think Pentel Bay has a bloody hope in hell. I'll be honest with you. I think I think he would have been clear second best. I think I think Mark One's riding probably cost him a couple of lengths. Yep. But he, I don't think he's in the same league as as the likes of Ancient Truth or. Or uh, or columnists for that matter, I have to say, or or Arabi, who of course has has won in France, or whichever um, O'Brien contingent bothers to turn up here. Um, 
Well, Camille Pizarro was crap in the co in the Coventry, went off favourite. Ancient Truth's got to jump up from a novice to this group race, which he could do. Often happens with Charlie Appleby also, don't get me wrong. So, yeah, I thought Pendle Bay ran, ran more than fair enough for his second start. Yeah, um, it's just it's the horses he was around. They were the yeah, wrong yeah. horses. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, fair enough. Right, on to Ascot. I think we're going to go next, SD, and we're going to oh, have a... Well, I think so. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's where we'll go. Uh, we'll finish with York. Um, yeah, Ascot on Saturday, um, probably the lesser meeting of the three, let's be honest. But their uh, feature race on Saturday is the Summer Mile. Um, we said that the Queen Anne this year at Royal Ascot was crap. And this is basically the group two equivalent of that race, because this, this to me is a bag of crap. Um, I don't know whether you've got any comment to make, SD. We've got the likes of Maljoon, Price Up, Quadwa. Uh, Sonny Liston, who we last saw finish second in the uh, Hunt Cup, fair play. Epic Cetus, not very, not not very blown away by this race. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts were at this stage. Um, not, I, I looked at it earlier. I mean, Sonny Liston, you know, ran second in the Hunt Cup of 111. That was a hell of a performance. I'm, oh, it was, yeah. I'm, I'm slightly, I'm slightly less negative on the race than you because. Could could be anything. One Why didn't really he run at Royal Ascot? Though? Won, won really well here, didn't he? Um, but you're playing... It's a tricky race at this stage to solve. Uh, because, of course, Quadwar and Maljum are in the same ownership. My yeah. guess would be... I don't know. I, I, to me, Maljum's a bit more of a, of a fast ground animal than possibly Quadwar. There is rain forecast. So basically, there's quite a bit of heavy rain forecast at Ascot tomorrow. Yep. So read into that what you will. I suspect Quadois has been absent ground-related rather than anything more sinister. Investo is owned by the same lot as well to make this even yep. more complicated. Um, and, and Witch Hunter, who has a Group 1 place this year, is 16-1. to 1 that I think would probably want it a bit quicker as well. It's a minefield of a race at the moment. I wouldn't call it crap, though. I think it's crap. Um, on to York, then, for Saturday. Uh, just, Premier just a race quick word on Asker in the five furlong handicap. I was pretty close to putting two up. Um, yes. But I wait for the day because I don't think the uh, fair wind at nine to one is perfectly fair. Did... Best of those coming off the pace at first last time in one of those Sunday series races. Owen Burrows. Owen Burrows again. Yes, could be a big, uh, a big, uh, a big weekend for the big fella, couldn't it? Um, and Badri, who likes Ascot. Do you know what? I'm going to put Badri up as a bet. I'm going to do something a little bit unusual because I've come to the conclusion that Badri. Last two runs at Ascot was second um, on his penultimate run in probably this race last year, and won here the time be the, the time before that. Won't mind the rain. The Camacho horses are running a little bit better than they were. They've been running abominably all year, and just strikes me as a horse who likes Ascot and. Interestingly, a lot of these are double entered. Badry is it? This has been the target, and, and at forty to one, I can. I think I'm going to have a swing at him. I think that's too big. Who's the forties with SD? I have no idea. It was forties earlier. Let me just uh, double check that. Um, okay, we're moving on. I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that now. We're moving on to the. Uh, uh, we're moving on to York, whereby there is a couple of races of interest to SD, one of those being the City Wall Stakes, which is also a sprint uh, race as well. Well, it is. Um, and, you know, the, the consequence, I mean, the City Wall Stakes was sold by Chester to York in 2011, and Chester's moaning that they've got a bad slot this week. Well, put on some decent races, and, and people may actually be a little bit more 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 interested. Um just a second, this bloody York card has flashed off my screen. It's back again. Yeah, I thought this was a race you really want to bet in, and I'm going to tell you why. Regional is priced as favourite with Hills. We've outlined it earlier. I cannot see regional running in this. You, but there's others in the race. You know, I think Starless got a chance, 
But if it rains, you're in trouble because I'm not sure they'll, they'll run then. And surely this, this Clarendon House, you know, one doing handstands at Cork last time, absolutely pulverised them here um, in, in a five furlong handicap uh, at the Dante meeting, winning off a mark of 105. And to me, in a, in a race where I don't think the favourite's going to run, there's several which are double entered. Flora Bermuda's entered on Friday, for example. I think Equilateral yeah. has another entry. I think Corker will run, but Corker will do what Corker does and either bugger the startup or or uh, not do very well in the finish. Rogue Lightning's been very disappointing this year. This looks at open go. I cannot believe this also is seven or two. Should be two to one. Yep, you did say that confidently early. And like I say, it did gag up at, at Cork, to be fair. Um, yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, right, okay. Uh, the other one at York SD was in this um, Silver Cup, which is over a mile and six furlongs group race. Yeah, so it's a kind of a Ebor sort of type race. Is it a win in your in? I hate the Ebor race. Probably. Pro pro probably. Yeah, yeah I, mean, so do I. I mean, last time, it's worth looking at. We did put Klondike up on the channel. He won. But he was given a masterful ride that day, you know. Klondike by Ryan, Richard Kingscote spoke to ride here. And he basically, you know, he went out in front, he controlled the race and Salt Bay nearly got him, but he was a, he was a masterful Ryan Moore ride. Hamish is in here. Hamish has also entered earlier in the week. Uh, and I can't see him. I think it's more likely to be soft at Newmarket than soft at York, where it's currently good to firm. We've got, we've got King of Conquest in here, who won the the Fred Archer last time. And again, you know, he's been around the block a bit, King King of Conquest. And you certainly wouldn't know if he get 14 furlongs. So that's that out the window. I couldn't... The rest is also in, but I think he's entered earlier in the week. And Almeric is entered somewhere else earlier in the week. And, and obviously, chess piece has become a bit disappointing. Yeah. Doga Legend was behind this favourite last time at Newmarket, but it was a lot more like it. And through, through various stages through the race, he looked like he was going to win. His career best performance has come at York. I mean, it's easy to forget this horse won a, won a great voltager, actually, and, and, and won it really quite well, beating, beating Secret State that day. And I just sort of swing at this at, at, at 14s. Was, was merited in a race what I think is A, going to cut up, and we're probably going to have Dover Legend's optimal conditions. He just seems to be on the road back. Now, he can't beat the jolly on the uh, on the new market form, but but it was it was a progression. If he progresses again, I think, he, I think he's got a decent chance. And I, I thought 14s was very big. Each way, SD? Yeah, I'd play each way because I think the race is going to Actually, it's 16. Up. It's 16 anyway. So you can even have you can even have sixteen. With. Bloody hell! We we just looked, didn't we, before the race, before the uh, before we came on. So yeah, you can even have sixteen, SD. I'm even getting you better prices as we go. Hundred to six. They won't take fractions online there. They will on course. Tim Brown just, takes them. Mick yeah. Walsh takes them. Yeah, you can have uh, sixteen to one. So we'll put that one in for you each way. Um, anything else, SD? Have I missed anything? We've covered all sorts of races, and we'll we, we, be back we, later we, in the week. Covered. All sorts of races. I, I'll be the first to admit, I don't have many winners on the July course at Newmarket. I've, for some reason, and I've never understood this, some horses run very, very badly there, inexplicably. Usually the ones I bet, but no, no, it's a, it's a yeah. super Saturday. Well, you could I'm say the same about Haydock, but you know, we're, we're not going to go into that this evening. Nothing wrong with Haydock, they were unfortunate. Um, some horses just run badly at badly at Newmarket and on the July course. I don't know why it's not on my book. You know, if it's I said something like that, you'd be you'd be right on me for that. If I said something as wishy washy as that, you'd be bang on me for that, to be fair. Come on. Just well, admit that look, you're no good you on the July course. There's an elephant in the room, you've identified it. And I will just give you a very quick summary of what happened at that what happened at No, the no, very we've not got course. time for that, Estee. We're twenty what? 25 minutes in. We're 25 minutes in. So if, well, if, you, if you're going to defend those... Haydock and I'm not allowed to criticise Haydock, then it's a pointless conversation. One of, one of those things, it could happen anywhere. It has happened at other courses. You could have, you could have two mil of rays anywhere. Yeah. 
and we've got you, we, you know we've got armchair clerks of the course. Yeah, you could who, have two mil of rain anywhere, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. You could have two mil of rain cause absolute mayhem, and it just could happen anywhere. It's so unlucky what's what's happened at Haydock recently, and over you know over the uh, numerous years and numerous incidents. They're just the most unlucky track in the country. So well, well done the, to Haydock. The way the weather is in the northwest of England. Is incredibly more complex than it is at other venues. The <laughs> rainfall total is a lot more, and, and you know stuff happens. But at the end yeah. of the day, unfortunately or fortunately, the safety card is always gonna gonna trump the commercial card, and that's how it should be. And and, and we just take it, we move on. Okay, well, thanks for that lovely explanation, ST. And like I say, just unlucky anywhere in the country can have two mil. Right, we're going to sign out on that and we'll be back later in the week with plenty to look forward to, particularly on Saturday. And ST, as we said at the top of the show, is a mile in front of me and I need to claw something back. Hopefully that can start with Pental Bay in the superlative. All the bets will be in the description as always. One point win or one point each way. Thanks for watching. 